Hello our most valued student, my name is Confident, welcome to our revision session and today's focus is on grade 11 as they prepare for, your fi for their final exams and if you are already doing grade 11, I will encourage you to use this video to check if ever you are ready to answer question 1 and question 2. So this is a previous paper that I took, uh, it is November 2016 uh, as you can see, this is paper 1. So I'm going to use this paper as an example how to approach your question one and two. This is just algebra that I'm focusing on and I will also uh, continue looking at other sections. But also I will encourage you to check the previous lessons that I've done on trigonometry especially. Um, I've done a lot on trigonometry in that section and if ever you want to benefit from those lessons you can always check them out. And uh, just also to encourage you to subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified every time there is a new video. If you are new to this channel, share it to your friends and colleagues and also it allows you guys to come as a group and look at these lessons and get some ideas and some tips. I hope this session will be of benefit to you. Just a few things, usually as I say, this is a full paper, but I'm focusing on uh, question one and two. Um, let's look at the... Um, a few housekeeping rules the instructions here the first one that i always emphasize to students is um it says if necessary round of your answers to two decimal places unless stated otherwise so if they didn't give you any rounding off always leave your answer to two decimal places and then it says number five answers only will not necessarily be awarded marks so avoid working on your rough paper sometimes you find that you are working on the question paper they have given you and you are only transferring the final answer into your answer book remember mathematics is about the steps those steps are important sometimes you might discover your answer is wrong but the steps that you are taking were necessary or or i mean the steps that you're taking were correct you might receive pat marks on the correct steps and then the final answer you discover that even if it's wrong you might be penalized maybe a mark or so so that is very 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 important Another one that is looking simple but very important is this one, guys, to say you need to write neatly and legibly, meaning present your work neatly. You are allowed to start with any question, by the way, and then you need to skip the subsections together, you know. Say, say is number the answers correct according to the number system used in this question paper. So what they're trying to say is allow, you can start with question four, but as long as you're going to do the whole of question four, including the subsections like 4.1, 4.1.1, ensure that it is kept together, they will be able to uh, mark you correctly. So it's not really a must that you need to number from, to answer it from question one until the end. You can start with the sections that you're comfortable with, but always keep those subsections together. Now let us dive into our lesson. As I said, I'm interested only in question one. Um, I hope I will have enough time, guys, to do other questions. So there we go. This is our question one, algebra, and question two is algebra. So it says we need to solve for x in each of the following. So the instruction here is solving for x. Now the good part with question 1.1 up to 1.1.5 is that you can test all your answers and you can mark yourself correctly. Actually, not only 1.1, 1.2 is also a simultaneous equation. Uh, you can still test your answer here. And then maybe 1.3 is the one that might be difficult to test it. But out of 30 marks, it means almost 26 marks you can be able to test them yourself without uh, the assistance of um, the person. I mean, you can't go out of that room saying, I don't know if I answered that question correctly or wrong because you are able to test it. So solving for X, the good thing about them is you can test all your answers. Let's start with the first one. It says 1.1.1. You are given 3x squared minus 5x minus 1 is equal to 0. And then it says leave your answer correct to two decimal places. Now, the moment you see these two decimal places, uh, let me have my new page here. It means you need to apply the quadratic formula. But before we do that, let me write the question again. We are supposed to solve 3x squared minus 5x minus 1. So if I write that as 3x squared minus uh, 5x minus 1, uh, this is equal to 0. And we are saying you need to leave your answer correct to two decimal places. 
Now, whenever they do that, uh, they are trying to give you a hint that this needs a quadratic formula. Now, the general form of a quadratic formula, you need to know that it is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So now, why am I doing this? Is because the, the, the formula that you are using to um, the quadratic formula that you are going to be using, it's x is equal to, now you need to know this formula. Remember, your paper does not have any formula sheet. If I can just show you your paper, this is an example of a full paper up to the end. And you can see that this is the end. It says total 150 and there are no formulas in your grade 11. So you need to know all your formulas by head. So which means this quadratic formula, you need to know it. But the good thing is in grade 12, they provide you the formula. So let us state it. It says minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC. Now look at the division sign. The division sign starts from minus B and it goes all the way up to the end of the square root sign. So you divide that by 2A. So it is very important for you to code it properly, otherwise you're going to make some errors. So if I have got this quadratic formula, the question is, how do I then link the general form of the quadratic equation together with the quadratic formula? So now, as I said, it is A. Remember, the general form says AX squared plus uh, BX plus C. So now what I do is, this is what I do. I take my A and cut it there. See that? When I cut it like that, this is what I have. And I cut with the X like that. And I cut with minus 1 like that. So here, what am I saying? I'm saying the coefficient of X squared is 3. The coefficient of X is minus 5. And then minus 1 then becomes just the number. So when I'm comparing here, I'm comparing coefficients, meaning you can see here that A is equal to 3. What about in the next one? B is equal to negative 5, as you can see that, and C is equal to negative 1. So with that, I'm then able to use my formula to say my X is equal to. Now, where there is a B, I want you to now focus on a few things where students make a lot of errors. Now, we have on the formula that negative sign. Do you see that? And then also, I have on my b that negative sign so you can see that those are two negative signs so how do you write that first you write the negative of the formula which is minus and then you put a bracket and write the b which is minus five you see what i just did there and then you can continue now to say plus or minus square root of b squared again put a bracket we have got b as minus five and then you close it to be squared. Always put a bracket. If you don't put a bracket, your answers are going to be wrong. Minus 4, again, A. To substitute for A, I must put a bracket. You can see A there is 3. And then after that, I close the bracket. I open another bracket for C. And you can see that C is a negative 1 like that. And then after that, I close the bracket. So guys, I'm taking it slowly like this because I'm assuming that you have forgotten this rule. And I just want to go as slowly as possible so that you can uh, be careful on the errors. Don't be in a hurry. You need all the marks. So you say all over 2. Again, you put a bracket and our A, you say it was a negative, I mean a 3. So that is the A part as the 3. So this is what you need. And after that, your calculator will do the rest of the job. So you take your calculator and you punch as is. You start with a fraction. Now you see there are two negatives, as is, minus, bracket, minus 5, close the bracket. Then you've got plus or minus. Let's start with the positive one. Square root of bracket, minus 5, close the bracket, squared, minus 4. Then there's a bracket to put a 3. There's a bracket to put a negative 1. And then play forward so that you can go down there divided by 2 uh, into that 3. This is what you have for the positive one equal to then you get your answer press SD which is 1,847. Remember they say to two decimal places. Now you, this is 1,85 because 7 affects the 4. 
but your calculator can do that for you you say shift setup you put six as fix and then you say fix between zero and nine you want two decimal places so you say two if you press sd your calculator can round up for you so it's 1.85 that's the first one or x is equal to then you get the second answer and in this case remember you play backwards change that positive to negative remember it's plus or minus so you need to change that equal to you press sd is negative 0 0.18 so that is negative 0 0.18 so these are the answers for the two um two answers that you're going to get whenever you're sol solving a quadratic uh, uh equation problem now you need to test your answer quickly what do you do so for testing what it means is you are going to take any value of x, whether the first one or the second one, where there is x squared, you put that value, where there is x, you put that value. So if I go to the previous one, which is the original, and I bring back my answer here, just want to show you a few things here. So this is the answer I had. I'll, I'll just use this one. Remember, this is rounded off, but I, you, the calculator al already keeps up to the last digit. But if I say set up six, and I take it back to the original decimals, which is nine. So this is the actual answer that I got. If I press AC and then I say answer equal to, you see, it gives me still that answer. So which means I can come here and say three answer squared, that answer, you don't have to put a bracket, minus five answer, minus one. The calculator knows how to work that. It must give me a zero. You see, where there is the X, I put answer squared, where there is the, uh, x squared and then when there's the x i put the answer if it's equal to i'm getting a zero which means my answer is correct that is how you can test you can use both values but i usually use the last one to get so that give me my answer so that is three marks that's how i test that so guys remember as i said whenever you're solving the quadratic formula you can be testing your answers so that is that let's come to the next one it says we need to solve for x in the following x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0. So we are here now on this question. So on this one, so we're done with this other one here. We're still on x. We're done with 1.1.1. Now we're in 1.1.2. I'm just going to work this one here, the simpler way of doing it. But again, I'll show you the second way. So we've got x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0. This is 3 max. Now, whenever they say they don't mention about rounding off and stuff. It means it has factors. So what you do, I've got x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0. I use what I call the product sum method. The product sum method, I take this one and that one I multiply it, which is 8, which is positive. In this case, 8 times x. So my product is positive 8x squared. And then my sum is whatever is remaining which is this section so that is my s this one is my product my sum is the positive so my sum is you can see that is negative 6x so what about the factors i'm looking for the factors of the product in other ways the factors of 8 are the two numbers that i can multiply to get 8 start from 1 obviously it's 1 times 8 the next one is 2 times 4 there is no any other number that i can multiply between uh, to get 8 except 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. From these numbers, um, when I multiply them, remember, I get this product. Now, when I want to add them, so there are two ways of getting a positive 8. Either it's 1 times 8 or minus 1 times minus 8. It will still give me an 8. 2 times 4 or negative 2 times negative 4. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. So these are two ways of getting a positive 8. 8 in this case what about the sum of negative 6 now 1 and 8 this section cannot give me a negative the only part i can get a negative is between these two so minus 1 minus 8 this will give me a negative 9 if i if i add it it will be a negative 9 but minus 2 plus minus 4 is equal to negative 6 so you can see that the factor is the, the two numbers that i'm looking for that can fulfill two conditions when you multiply them you get 8x squared when you add them you get minus 6x it is minus 2x and minus 4x you see that so now what i do from here i just continued like that to say 8 
squared I mean x squared instead of 6 now I write those two numbers minus 2x minus 4x plus 8 then I factorize the first two what is common this is now by grouping x is common between x squared minus 2x x into x squared is x x into minus 2x is negative 2 now I take a positive first by default put a positive what is common between minus 4x and plus 8 so it's 4 and 8 which is 4 now 4 into negative 4x is negative x and 4 into positive 8 is positive 2 4 into 8 is 2 so now you can see that it's x minus 2 in the brackets and minus x plus 2 so those this one must match these two must match so which means i can take out a negative in the second one which is x minus 2 now instead of positive 4 i take out a negative 4 now, when I take out a negative 4, whatever follows, I interchange the signs from negative to positive, from positive to negative. So I've got x minus 2, x minus 2. Do you see that? So when I've done that, I say now x minus 2, outside the brackets, it's x minus 4. Remember, we're solving for x, so I'm supposed to put equal to 0 there. So everything must be equal to 0. So then the answer is x minus 2 equal to 0. Now, when you take minus 2 to the other side, you will have x is equal to minus, minus 2 becomes a positive 2 when it crosses the equal sign, which is x is equal to 2. The second one, x minus 4 is equal to 0. When minus 4 goes to the other side of the equal sign, it becomes x is equal to 4. So that is the simplest way you could have done it. But as I said before, it's a quadratic equation. You can compare it to the question that we did here. So you can still use a quadratic formula. So what you have in the quadratic formula is, remember it was x squared minus 6x and um, plus 8. So this was equal to 0. So as I said, again, to reiterate the quadratic formula, you, 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 you kind of note it down, which is ax squared plus bx plus c this is equal to zero what are you trying to do you're trying to compare the coefficient of x here you can see there is no number but there is a default one that is hidden there so a here is equal to one then you do the same thing coefficient of x you can see this is b and minus six i look it looks the same my writing sometimes is terrible so just um apologies for that so you can see that b is equal to negative six and lastly, I've got my C. You can see that C is equal to 8. So guys, with that, I can then come back to the quadratic formula, which is X is equal to minus B. You need to know it, remember? Plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So now it's a matter of now putting those values. X is equal to the negative one from the formula. It says minus, and then you go for B, you put a bracket, the B is negative six plus or minus square root of bracket, negative six squared minus four. My A is one, my C is eight, then all over two and my A is one. So it will give you two answers. Always remember you need to come up with two answers um, in this case. So if you do that, uh, let me input that, which is negative bracket negative 6. Start with the positive. You can start with the negative if you want. There is nothing wrong with that. Negative 6 squared minus 4 into 1 into 8 and then all over 2 into 1. See that? Equal to. So the first answer x is equal to 4. If I play back, uh, x is equal to 4, you put a negative now, the other one is x is equal to 2. So my x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 2. Now if you remember the previous answers that we got, we also got here x was equal to 4, see that, and x was equal to 2. But as I said, don't leave it like that, you need to test your answers, you definitely need to test it because if you leave it like that, don't become uh, in a way overconfident that uh, you're correct. Just test your answer. So the first one you say it was 4, put a bracket and say 4 squared where there is x minus 6 bracket x is 4 and then plus 8. 
So I'm just entering that it must give me a zero. You can see that you can play back, put a two now, delete, put a two. But when one works, chances are the other will also work. So you see, it gives me a zero. That is how you approach that, guys. I hope this benefits you. Now let us move on to the next part of this question. And now I'm looking at question number 1.1.3, that part. So it says you are supposed to solve for x. Remember, don't forget the question. We need to solve for x. So I give it 4x minus 2x squared is less than 0. Now, let's say I choose to work on it from here just to explain a few things to you. These are inequalities now. I need you to be very sensitive here. Pay attention, you see. Even the mark allocation has changed. It looks simpler, but it's 4 marks. You have got can approach it in two ways. So we are given, in this case, 4x minus 2x squared so they are saying what this is less than zero so I, I want you to pay attention the first thing that you need to do is to get what we call critical values that's what you need to do in other ways what are we saying solve for x that's the first part you solve for x so how do you solve for x you're going to say 4x minus 2x squared is equal to zero there were lots of ways of solving this guys i mean actually three different ways you can solve this even if not four and there is quite a different ways you can solve this but the simplest one that you can do you can the simpler one the simpler one here you can actually use the one of factorizing where you take out uh 2x you can see 2x is common here between 4 and 2 2 is common now 4x minus 2x squared you can see x is common so you are saying 2 into 4, it's 2. x into x is 1. So it's 2 minus 2 into 2 is 1. x into x squared, you are left with that x is equal to 0. So either that is equal to that, which is 2x, is equal to 0, or whatever is in the bracket, 2 minus x is equal to 0. Divide by 2 on both sides. So you can see that this one is simple. x is in this case, x is equal to 0 here, or take x to the other side. We have got 2 is equal to x. Therefore, if you rearrange, we have got x is equal to 2. So this was one simplest way of solving it. But let's say, for whatever reasons, you forgot how to solve this and you're struggling. Remember, I said these are critical values. We're not. This is not the final answer, by the way. You cannot get 4 marks out of this. Remember, the question says solve for x, but how many marks is this? 4 marks. They would have given the other two even bigger marks, um, uh, higher marks, if ever it was about solving for x. Just like that. Now, how do you do it? Arrange it again in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Why? Because this is a quadratic equation. You see, it has got x squared. So if it has got x squared, it's a quadratic equation. The highest power being squared means it's a quadratic equation. So let's rearrange it. So you will have minus 2x squared plus 4x. And then there is no c, so you say plus 0 is equal to 0. Why? You, jo you also want to match like that. Um, you want to match like this. Uh, sorry about that. I need to take also the signs. You need to match like this. And you need to match like that. Meaning your a must be equal to negative 2, your b must be equal to 4, and your c must be equal to 0. So when you now input it in the quadratic formula, remember, so we have got x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So what you have now, you have got x is equal to minus b. It's minus bracket 4 plus or minus square root of bracket 4 squared minus 4, my a is negative 2, my c is 0, and then this thing all over 2, my a is negative 2. Are you seeing that? So this is the option that is long, but it will still give you the answer. I prefer using the quadratic formula, being comfortable with it. It can solve for any quadratic equation. So when we've done that, you simplify it. Remember, at this stage, you just have to rely on the calculator. You don't have to think much. Don't overthink it. I know students sometimes want to simplify it on their own, but avoid using your own thinking because 
you're going to get exhausted before the question finishes. 4 minus 2, 0, which will automatically make everything 0 there. Um, this case over 2 minus 2. When you do that, you've got first value x is x is equal to 4. Sorry about that. There was a sign here plus. Let me correct that. So the first one is x is equal to 0. I play back and put a negative or x is equal to 2. You see, we got them. x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 2. We got these answers. Now, what to avoid? You know, students sometimes are given this question and they struggle. You find them, they can't even solve that because they kind of ask themselves, what must I do? Now, we're given what? We were given uh, 4x. Let me write it down again. 4x minus 2x squared. And I say to find the critical values, you equate that to zero. So what students do, sometimes they're tempted to say, okay, this is fine. I'm going to take the negative to the other side. So you have got 4x is equal to 2x squared. And then they'll be like, okay, I can see um, 2 is common and x. So they divide by the common denominator, 2x over 2x. When you do that, look at that, you cancel. The x here cancels, you've got 1. The 2 into 4, it's 2. The x cancels there. So you are left with what? You are left with x is equal to 2. So you see, you are just left with x is equal to 2. But one thing is you have lost one value, which is x is equal to 0. So you are going to be penalized there because dividing by a variable, meaning you are losing one another answer there. You lose that x is equal to 0. So avoid that trap. Okay. So now... If you have so, remember I said this is a wrong. It's a total no. Now, if you have done that, guys, that is not the end. Now, let's go back. Let me if I can go back to this. Um, let's go back to this question now and do what this question is requiring. This question is saying uh, we need to solve this. This is 4x minus 2x squared is less than zero i told you these are critical values so what you do you come up with a number line here it's a number line for both answers remember the number line is like that and then you write your critical values just like in a number line remember the number line goes in that direction so you you, you have your critical values zero stats and then you've got two these are the answers that we got remember now you're going to test um, in here, remember, we had 4x squared minus, two, minus 2x squared is equal to 0. So what you do is you take a calculator, you choose any value before 0. It can be any value before 0. It can be minus 1, minus 10, minus 15, any value. Let me say minus 10. So I'll say 4 bracket negative 10. I think that minus 2 bracket negative 10 squared. I just chose any value. Now, what I'm interested in is the sign. Don't worry with the number. Look at the sign. It says it's negative. So here I'm going to put a sign that is negative. So I'm going to have a negative there. I'm going to choose a value again between 0 and 2. And the simpler one is 1. So if I take my calculator again and say between 0 and 2, there is 1. So 4 bracket 1 minus 2 bracket 1 squared. I'm going to find the sign of the number. I'm not interested in the value. I'm interested in the sign. So I'm getting a 2, which means it's positive. So I'm getting here a positive 2, a positive answer. Any value that you can think of. Now, let me choose a number on my critical values after 2, which can be 6. So if I take my calculator again and say 4 bracket 6 minus 2 bracket 6 squared, See, I'm interested in the sign. The sign is negative. So I'm going to come here again and say the sign was negative. This is what is expected whenever you're testing your critical values. It's either you get a negative, a positive, and a negative. The signs must alternate. Or sometimes you can get a po The moment you start with a positive, it means the negative follows and the positive follows. The moment you start with a negative, the positive follow and the negative just like that. Always remember that. You will not get... For example, you won't get a positive, positive, negative, no. Or a negative, negative, positive, no. You won't get such scenarios. You will either get 
uh, start with a positive, then a negative, then a positive, or a, pos a negative, positive, and negative. So this is the scenario. But now, how does this work? Let me write this one near here. 4x squared minus 2x squared. It was 4x. Let me write it again. It was 4x minus 2x squared. And the sign that I had, it was saying is less than 0. Is less than 0. Right. So now, how does these two communicate? This question as well as the sketching that I've done here. This on the number line. Now, this, this word less, if something is less than 0, we mean that it is negative. So, it's less than 0, it's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 5. So, anything less than 0 is negative. So, it means you are going to connect this less with the negative and check where it appears on this graph. You can see we have a negative there, we have a negative. So, our region of concern is where the negative is. That is why we were putting those signs. We're putting those signs so that we are going to now communicate with the uh, the sign, the inequality sign. If it was a greater than, you know that greater than means, greater than zero means positive, we're going to have our area of interest being on the positive sign, if, if that is the thing. So it's either it's negative, you only focus on the negative side. If it's positive, you only focus on the positive. Now that we want a negative one, how do you write your answer? Let me just show you how simple this becomes. So what you do, as I said, look at the sign. I said this arrow goes that direction. This arrow goes that direction. That's where the number line is increasing. So when I'm writing now, I put an X there. So X, that sign, and then the critical value is zero. Another one, I put always that with the X, the sign, and the number. So it's the X, the sign, you can see it and the critical value it's two so this is how to write answers that are outside as a hint as a hint if the negative was like this let's say the negative was here positive and positive i told you that the signs alternate let's say the negative was here and this was our region if it's like that you don't have to stress you just put your x in the center there and then you just put these lines and this these signs and you check was the question saying less than or equal to? It just says less than zero. If it's less than, you leave it as less than. If it's equal to, you also put an equal sign like less than or equal to, like that. But they didn't include, so your answer will be between that. So it's either you have this version, but if it's outside where there are two separate negatives, the version that you're going to have is that. I hope, guys, this makes sense. I was just doing a few lessons while I'm just practicing with you. So that is how you get your, your um, formats for that. Next question is 1.1.4. This question is more of an exponent question. But now let me clear my uh, space now. Let's clear this. Now, if I'm solving this kind of a question here, what am I given? I'm given 2 to the power 3x plus 1. So let's do that. It's 2 to the power of 3x plus 1. And then what else? Uh, plus 2 to the power 3x plus 2 to the power 3x. And then says this is equal to 12. How many marks is 4 marks? This is equal to 12. It's not complicated. Very, very, very simple. You use the laws of exponents. Remember the law which says a to the power of x plus y. Actually, let me write it the way you know it. a to the power of x dot or times a to the power of y. You know that when the bases are the same, you add the exponents a to the power of x plus y. Now, if I read this law backwards, I will have a to the power of x plus y is equal to, then it will be a to the power of x times a to the power of y. So I'm reading it from, uh, in this case, from right to left. So in this way, that's what I'm going to do here. If I'm given 2 to the power 3x plus 1, it will be 2 to the power of 3x dot or times 2 to the power of 1. Are you seeing that? Plus 2 to the power of 3x. So I've managed to split that is equal to 12. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I want to factorize. 
Now watch this. I've got 2 to the power of 3x there. And then I've got 2 to the power of 3x there. I'm going to take it out because of this positive sign here. It allows me to factorize. So let me undo this so that it's clear again. And I repeat. Why was I splitting? I was splitting because whenever there is a positive sign, it means this part and that part, I can factorize it out. So let's factorize that. I will have 2 to the power of 3x. Remember, what I'm doing when I'm factorizing is, it's like I'm cancelling that and cancelling that. I'm left with that. That's the first part. So what I have is 2 to the power of 1. Then I have a plus. Again, cancel that, cancel that. 2 to the power of 3x into 2 to the power of 3x. You get a 1. So like that. This is equal to 12. Don't say you get nothing. You get 1. And then from there, you can add what is in the bracket, which is 2 to the power of 3x. Now, 2 plus 2 to the power 1 is same as 2. 2 plus 1, guys, is 3 is equal to 12. Then you are able to divide. Now, remember, this is times. It's multiplying. So you can divide by 3 on both sides such that you have 2 to the power of 3x is equal to 3 into 12 is 4. Now, you have to match the bases now. 2 to the power of 3x is equal to, why am I saying you have to match the bases? Remember this lesson, which says, when you've got an equation like this, if you say a to the power of x is equal to a to the power of y, look at this, the bases are the same. So what you do, you take that exponent, which is x is equal to that exponent, which is y. You equate the exponents. Don't do this thing of canceling. It's, it's a mathematical error, that one. It's suicidal. Don't do that. Otherwise, this power is too high. There is going to fall down and break its neck. So don't do that, guys. So just joking, but I'm saying it's not that we're cancelling. When the bases are the same, we equate the exponent. So that exponent is equal to that exponent. So here, I've got a 2, but the 4, I can write it in terms of 2, which is 2 to the power of 2. What, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to also do the same thing that I did in the example to say match the exponents. Therefore, looking at the powers, it means 3x, that is equal to that. You equate those exponents, is equal to 2. Now, the last thing is to divide by 3 on both sides. So you can see the value of x now. What is it? x is equal to 2 over 3. That's how you solve it. Are you satisfied? Yes, be satisfied after testing the answer. So we are saying x is equal to, in this case, 2 over 3. So if x is equal to 2 over 3, we need to test it there and see whether it will, um, in this case, uh, give us a 12. So if 2 uh, to the power 3, bracket, my x, remember, is 2 over 3. So put a bracket there and say 2 over 3. I think that. And then plus 1 as a power, then it go down and say plus 2 to the power again, 3, bracket, fraction, it's 2 over 3. And you do that. If you say equal to, it must give us a 12, which is exactly what we're getting. And then you get 4 marks for that. It wasn't bad. It wasn't difficult. It was just basic. You just needed to know your um, exponents, guys. 1.1.5, it's 6 marks. Interesting. So let's look at this one. It says square root of x minus 1 plus 3 is equal to x minus 4. If I can write it here and say you are given a square root of x minus 1 and it says what? Plus 3 is equal to x minus 4. Plus 3 is outside is equal to x minus 4. Six marks, guys. You need to pay attention then to this. Not because it's difficult, but because of the mark allocation. So the examiner thought of giving it more marks, but it's not really complicated uh, in a way. So it's square root of x minus 1 plus 3 is, is called x minus 4. What are you going to do? First things first. Don't be tempted to just quickly start doing this and then you say square and you say square. No, that would be wrong. What you need to do, you have got something that is stopping you from doing that. It is this plus 3. So you need to take it to the other side. So what you're going to have is square root of x minus 1 is equal to x minus 4 
minus 3. Remember, it was positive, it becomes negative. You need to have only the square root on one side, like this. See, everything is under the square root. Now, minus 4 minus 3 is, is minus 7. So you need to have purely only the square root so that you can do that now. If you have got square root only on this side, then what you do on the left, you do on the right. Remember how to remove the square root, you square on both sides. That's how the square root falls off. So here you'll simply have x minus 1 is equal to. Now let me show you what students sometimes make serious errors. Look at this. They are given x minus 7 squared. You know, after doing all this work and you make an error equal to, you know, students will take this and say this is same as x squared minus 7 squared. Can you believe this? And then they'll get x squared minus 49. Guys, nothing is far from the truth. This is suicidal in nature. Suicidal attempts. That's what you'll be doing here. What are you supposed to do? You are just supposed to say x minus 7 square means another x minus 7. That's what that square means. Don't be uh, kind of confused to say how do I simplify that. It's x minus 7, x minus 7. Then you expand. This multiplies. Let me use a different color for you. I'm just taking it slowly because sometimes you guys forget. This, you x multiplies that and x multiplies that, x multiplies that, I mean negative 7 multiplies that and that. So what do you get here? You are going to say x minus 1 is equal to x times x is x squared, x times minus 7 is negative 7x, negative 7 times x is negative 7x, negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. At this stage I can be so quick here, I don't need to actually do all this, but just for the sake of you guys, remember sometimes I focus on the underdogs. What is an underdog? It's that guy who says, I'm not good. My basics sometimes are not good in math. So just take it slowly so that I can understand. Once I understand, I can then do this thing much better and quicker. So you are the underdog. I was also once an underdog like you guys. So I needed someone to take things slowly so that I can absorb them. Once I know them, it becomes easier to work fast. So let's continue. X minus 1 is equal to x squared. Now, minus 7x minus 7x is minus 14x. Always use your calculator, by the way. Plus 49. Use your calculator. You, you, you'll you be shocked how students sometimes see minus 7 as minus 7 minus 7. They write a totally different answer. So rely on your calculator in this case. You continue. The easier way I see it, it's up to you, but is to take everything this side, this side. To me, it was easier. But if you feel like you prefer taking everything to the left hand side, it's still fine. But I'll do what I'm showing you. Why? Because most of the stuff is already on this side. And my x is x squared is the one that is making me always remain it as positive there. That's why you see everything is following the x squared. So what will it be? 0 is equal to x squared. Now minus 14x. I'm collecting like terms while x minus 1 is coming this side. It becomes x was positive it will become negative x minus 1 you can see it's negative it become plus 49 plus 1 because it was negative now it's positive so 0 is equal to x squared minus 14 minus 1 remember minus 14 x minus x is minus 15 x and then 49 plus 1 is plus 50 therefore you are allowed to say this thing can be rearranged or therefore you can use this sign therefore x squared minus 15x plus 50 is equal to zero guess what i have now quadratic equation anything with a squared it's a quadratic equation so what you do go to the general one a x squared minus bx plus c i mean ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Always positive, guys. It's me who's now making errors. Now you cut the coefficient. It means the coefficient of uh, x squared. You cut there the coefficient of x. And then the c, you can see it's easier like that. But the b, you can see it's 15. Now I showed you that if there is no number, it means there is a hidden one there. So here, a is equal to 1. b is equal to, do you see my error now? I cut in the wrong area. I hope you're able to see that the way I cut this is wrong. 
because I must always cut with the positive B where positive B is it will also help me to say that B is negative 15 so please avoid that temptation to cut in the wrong area so the coefficient of X here is minus 50 not just 15 and then I've got C being equal to 50 don't forget the formula it's a quadratic formula not complicated it says X is equal to minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4ac all over 2a you see that this question involves quite uh first of all you have to um convert this get rid of the square root convert it into a quadratic equation now he is using the quadratic formula that's why maybe they're giving it more marks so it's minus bracket what is my b again a negative 15. i think we've dealt with this enough now bracket b squared is negative 15 squared minus 4 my a my a guys is 1 and my c is 50 all right i divide that by 2 and my a is 1 so what is my x what you just need to be careful there is how you enter that in the calculator bracket minus bracket minus 15 close it we start with the positive square root of negative 15 squared minus 4 my a is 1 my c is 50 we say this is all over 2 1 we get two values first one x is equal to 10 i'll remember that one put a negative and x is equal to 5 so i've got two answers x is equal to 10 or x is equal to 5 let me take it back here so remember what is the answer x is equal to 10 or x is equal to 5 now always test your answers especially in this area whenever you see a square root sign when you are dealing with questions like this let me take it here when you are dealing with questions like this i will say nb test your answers test your answers test your answers i don't know how to em overemphasize you need to test your answers because in most cases one of the solutions is not correct let me show you for example what did we say we say it here um x was equal to what 10 and 5 all right let me come here to say if we were testing here x is equal to 10 or x is equal to 5 let me just remove this we're going to test this together guys and you'll see what what is going to happen here so start with the first one with x is equal to 10 let's start here when x is equal to 10 so what do we have you see i'm taking my time here it's 10 minus 1 plus 3 is equal to 10 minus 4. i know it overlapped but i think you can see what is 10 minus 1 so this is square root of 9 Okay, can you use a calculator let's not become uh let's com not complicate things square root of 10 uh sorry about that 10 minus 1 play forward plus 3 right i you see now i must say equal to because after that that's all i have equal to that's what i have on the left hand side so 10 minus 1 plus 3 is equal to 6 so 6 is equal to what is 10 minus 4 6 is equal to 6 left hand side equal to right hand side so far so good this solution is correct let's try the other one the other one because i did that i said how do you test it when x is equal to 5 you have got square root of 5 minus 1 plus 3 is equal to 5 minus 1 again apply the help of the calculator in this case and then let's see what it gives us I have square root of 5 minus 1, right? And then plus 3. Then I'm going to say equal to, you see, I'm getting in this case a 5 on the left hand side. So 5 is equal to, now what is 5 minus 1? 5 minus 1 is 4. So there is no way 5 can be equal to 4. This is not true, which means x is equal to 5 is not the solution. So how do they give you your full marks? You'll come here and say x is equal to 10, but x is not equal to. They'll mark you when you do that and say it's not equal to. 
when you put an equal sign and you scratch it out you are saying this is not a solution guys i'm checking it slowly so that you don't make such errors then you will get your six marks if you don't do that you'll get five out of six i hope that was beneficial let's move on to the other parts um the other parts of this equation remember i'm doing question one and two we're about to finish question one though it was quite some bit of work simultaneous equation on this simultaneous equation uh let's clear the space now and get on with this one all right it's also an interesting part of the algebra what are we given say solve for x and y simultaneously six marks well sometimes they give it seven they made it equal to this question i don't know why but to them these two the amount of work involved and then the complexity complexity of the problem they are saying it was equivalent i would have given this one five and then i give this one seven but maybe it was not a difficult one in this case all right but that is me remember it's my opinion let us look at the question 1.2 it says solve for x simultaneously what are we given we are given 3x minus y plus 2 equal to 0 and y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 8 so let's have that 3x minus y plus 2 so we have got 3x here let me use it this pen 3x minus y plus 2 is equal to 0 is that correct 3x minus y plus 2 is equal to 0 the other one it's y is equal to minus x squared plus 2x plus 8. y is equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. Am I right? Negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. So this is what we are given simultaneous. Now, the moment you do that, you need to call that equation 1. And we have our equation 2. That's how you solve this uh, equation. Then you need to look at your simpler equation. In this case, it is equation 1. You need to make either x or y the subject. Look for the easier one that can be made um, the subject. You can do that. That is one way. Or, so that is, let me show you what you could have done then. Then we are going to say this. You can see y is the easier one. You could have taken y to the other side. So we are going to have now on this side 3x. See that? 3x plus 2 is equal to y that would be equation 3 do you see how this thing could have panned out but it is not necessarily like that let me show you how clever in a way uh, the examiner was in this case the examiner took the complicated one and already separated y for you so what you could simply do is where there is y here you put everything that is on this side you see why is that why so you put what is on the uh, right hand side so i can actually write this already done and say this is same as 3x this was interesting now where they say is minus i put minus but what is my y y is the whole of this so i put a bracket which is negative x squared plus 2x plus 8 are you seeing that so this was 3x uh, minus y so this is my if you can look at this this is my actual y and my y is minus x squared plus 2x plus 8 and then after that i have that plus 2 don't forget that one is still relevant plus 2 equal to 0 you see that that is how you could have done it now this negative is like a negative one they just interchanges the sign so you've got 3x squared I mean 3x not a squared then where is negative x now it's positive x squared where it's positive 2x is negative 2x you just interchange if you're multiplying by a negative 1 or just a negative positive 8 is negative 8 plus 2 equal to 0 collect like terms and start with x squared remember the quadratic equation always start with x squared so let's start with x squared is there is our x squared, nothing else. So we're collecting like terms. Then we've got that one plus 3x. This one on simultaneous equation is all about errors. They are just checking, are you very sensitive 
to, to, to things like uh, simple errors. So we are left with minus 2x. That's why you see me ticking them. And then after that, I've got this, which is negative 8. I've got this, which is plus 2, equal to 0. So why was I doing that? I was just ensuring that I can quickly scan with my eyes to see is there anything that is not ticked, that is not underlined or marked. So I've got x squared. Now, 3x minus 2x, which is plus x or plus 1x, minus 8 plus 2, use a calculator, it will give you negative 6, is equal to 0. Now, guess what? I encourage you, go straight to the quadratic formula. I know you'll be tempted to say, but say I know how to solve this. Leave it out. Let's go for the quadratic formula. And in the quadratic formula, remember, there is a 1 there, there is a 1 there, there is minus 6. Now, what is my a? It's 1. What's my b? It's 1. What's my c? It's negative 6. You remember a, this is a, this is b, this is c. Write the quadratic formula again. It's x. You're going to say, but say I know this, but just to avoid errors, go straight for the quadratic formula, which is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's not going to take you long. I know you'll be like, but it's wasting time. I know, but you are just ensuring that your answer is going to be correct. You can lose maybe three, four minutes, but, you know, doing the right thing. One squared minus four. A is one. C is negative six all over two A. Unless if you're very, very strong with your factorization, the normal one, you can do that. But I found students struggling a lot with the simple factorization so at the end of the day they end up after this making silly errors and it cost them all the working that they've been doing so i've got a one there and then it's plus uh, square root of bracket one squared minus four a is one and c is negative six i think you've seen the quadratic formula is like a friend to me over two oh a are uh, supposed to put a as one Sorry about that. So equal to, now when I'm finding the answer there, x is equal to 2, that's the first one. I just think you see that. x is equal to 2, put a negative, or x is equal to minus 3. So that's, those are the two answers. x is equal to 2, or x is equal to negative 3. Remember here I said instead of that, I'm supposed to put a 1 uh, there. Just like here, if I can just remove here, it was supposed to be a 1 in brackets. So now that I've got the x value, x is 2 or x is 3, you can go to equation 2, you code it, remember y is minus x squared plus 2x plus 8. So you write it here to say y is equal to minus x squared plus 2x, what? y is minus x squared plus 2x plus 8. This is what I'm given. So it will give you two values again. Write it again. Y is equal to minus x squared plus 2x plus 8. See, I'm having this. The first one is when x is equal to what? 2. The other one is when x is equal to what? Negative 3. So that's what you're going to be doing. Now, you don't have to... Uh, you can... Okay, let's do it for, the, for interest sake. Let's substitute y is equal to... So that you see how you write it minus bracket 2 squared plus 2 bracket 2 plus 8 then it will give us an answer for y again here y is equal to minus bracket minus 3 squared plus 2 you see the importance of brackets guys don't leave out the brackets it's very important for you to have the bracket let's start with the first one so it's minus bracket 2 squared plus 2 bracket 2 uh, plus 8. You can see y is equal to 8. That's the first one. And then the other one. So it's 8. Remember that minus bracket minus 3 squared plus 2 bracket negative 3 uh, plus 8. The first one was 8. The other one is minus 7. So here y is equal to 8. Here y is equal to 7. So this is how you present your answers now. In finality, you can say your answers are when x is 2 in coordinate form, y is 8, 
or when x is minus 3, y, I think it was negative 7. Was it a positive 7? I think it was a negative 7. I think I'm, I, I forgot to write a negative 7 there. So, but we're going to test it. Let's quickly test our answers. How do you test your answers? Go to the original. Um, let me not do that first. Let's go here to the original. Remember the values that we have. We had x is what? 2, 8. Am I right? And the other one was minus 3, minus 7. See, it's easier when it's in coordinate form. So let's test it at this stage. So you start with the first one. When x is 2, 8, so you say 3 into x is 2 uh, minus y is 8 plus 2. It must give us a 0. I'm getting a 0. So far, so good. Start to do the other value. Minus 3. Sorry. It's x is 3 into minus 3. x is minus 3 minus bracket y is negative 7 do you see that it must give me okay plus 2 don't forget plus 2 equal to i'm getting a zero so far so good let's test it on this side when x is 2 so y remember y here is equal to 8 so if you put a 2 which is negative bracket 2 squared this one is obvious because that's what we're using plus 2 plus 8 it will definitely give you an 8 and the other one will be correct. But the one that was very imperative is the one that we never used. So you can see that that's how you can get your six marks. Guys, it's a simultaneous equation. They are there to just confuse you, but you just need to know how to approach it. Um, if you check on my uh, approach here, I'd given you an alternative, this one. Okay, I think I gave you an alternative here to say you can take the y to the other side whereby you're going to say 3x plus 2 is equal to y it was going to be equation 3 so now where there is y in equation 4 remember equation 4 there is y is equal to so you're going to say 3x in this case 3x where there is y plus 2 is equal to minus x squared plus 2x plus 8 this still was going to give you the same answer the approach was still going to lead you to the same um, answer up to this because what you're going to do you can take um everything this side so you've got x squared and collect like terms plus 3x minus 2x i'm making it come this side on there I'm, I'm jumping everything to the left hand side but collecting like terms and then i've got plus 2 minus 8 is equal to 0 so x squared 3x minus 2x is plus x 2 minus 8 is minus 6 is equal to 0 just look at these how they are the same so at the end of the day you are still going to get the same answer all right guys now we are almost to a close this one is 1.3 says show that the roots of this equation are real and rational for all values of k first part is real and rational so what you need to understand is what is real real means um a real number or if they are real it means when you find the square root of that number you are going to um it's a number that is positive for example 18 this is, means it's real 9 it means it's real but let's go back to the rational now square root of 18 will give you um let me say uh if i do that for square root of 18 for you if I say square root of 18, see, that is real. We have a square root of 18, which is 4,24. So it's 4,24. But now square root of 9 is equal to uh, 3. So not only is square root of 9 real, but square root of 9 is real and rational. Why? Because it is it's a perfect square. So this 9 is, 9 is equal to 3 squared. So 9 is a what? A perfect square square why because now a perfect square if you put a square root on a perfect square you get that number three so in other ways we're going to prove that is this a perfect square so how do you do that let's take it to my uh, uh part to show that the roots we've got 3x squared plus k plus 2x is equal to 1 minus k if i can write that one in a way to say they gave me in this case it was 3x squared all right and then it was what 
plus k plus 2x plus k plus 2x, all right? And then is equal to 1 minus k? Is equal to 1 minus k. First things first, we need to um, write it in the form of a quadratic formula. You see, we're back to the general formula of a quadratic equation. Let me show you what I'm saying. So this will be 3x squared. Take everything to the left-hand side. Plus k plus 2x. Now, everything goes this side. You will have um, 1 becomes minus 1. k becomes plus k is equal to 0. You agree with me? Now, let's cut the general form of a quadratic equation. It's a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to 0. See the importance of this equation? It covers, we've been looking at it for a long, long time now. There is my a, the coefficient of x squared. Now, if I cut there, look at my b, take the signs, don't forget. There is my b. And then again, if I cut on the signs, there is the c. So what is my a? a is equal to what is my a here a is equal to 3 what's my b b is equal to k plus 2 what's my c c is equal to minus 1 plus k so if you agree with me there now if we are looking at this question which says show that the roots of the equation whenever we are dealing with the roots of the equation they are real and rational i showed you the square root of 18 and square root of 9. so what we are interested in is um if i come here and i write again the quadratic equation you still remember it's what x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac and then it's all over 2a so this is the quadratic equation but now, whenever I'm looking at the nature of roots, the roots, the nature of roots is determined by this part. This part. That is what deals with the nature of roots. But not only that part is telling us about the nature of roots, what is telling us about the nature of roots is what is inside that square root. So it means when we are dealing with the nature of roots, we are looking at this part which says b squared minus 4ac that is called delta is equal to that's what it's called so delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac now if you want to prove that it is real and rational you need to solve for this so you continue and say delta is equal to now remember you have your b there what is b it's k plus 2 so what i'll have i'll say bracket k plus 2 that's my b squared minus 4 i have my a which is 3 bracket is 3 just like you substitute in your quadratic equation i have my c there is c which is minus 1 plus k now the aim is to simplify this how do you simplify that you continue to say delta is equal to now don't be tempted again remember k plus 2 is k plus 2 and another k plus 2, not k squared plus 4. Because some they'll say k, k, k to the power 2 is k squared, 2 to the power 2 is 4. Don't do that. Minus, now 4 times 3, you can actually say minus 12 into minus 1 plus k. Are you seeing what I'm doing, guys? We are looking at the nature. Now, delta is equal to multiply k times k is k squared k times 2 is plus 2k 2 times k plus 2k 2 times 2 plus 4 again this you open that bracket 12 times minus 1 is a positive 12 negative 12 times k is negative 12k just be careful with your signs at this stage now delta is equal to collect all like terms it's a quadratic equation again in a way not equation but a quadratic expression so you've got k squared and then look at this, 2k, 2k minus 12k. So you can bring it together plus 2k plus 2k minus 12k. And then after that, I've got a 4, I've got a 12, which is plus 4 plus 12. If you simplify this, 
what I have is k squared. 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 minus 2 is negative 8k. Plus 4, 4 plus 12, it's 16. So you see that? Now, someone will say, you see, you're avoiding factorizing. Now, you'll be stuck because I kept on saying use the quadratic equation. Guess what? You can still use the quadratic equation here. What I usually do, I just say, suppose I'm given k squared minus 8k plus 16. I suppose that I was given equal to 0 so that, remember here, my a is here, my b is here, my c is here. So if I'm using the quadratic equation, which is this one. I'm not going to write it. I'm just going to be quick here, which is x is equal to minus b. You can see it's minus bracket minus 8 plus or minus square root of b squared is minus a squared minus 4. My a is 1. My c is 16 all over 2 and my a is 1. I think that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm still trying to factorize uh, that I'm gonna now if I use a calculator it's equal to minus bracket negative 8 now it's plus start with the positive plus square root of bracket minus 8 squared minus 4 my a is 1 and my c is 16 all over 2 1 2 into 1 I'm getting that equal to so you see first one x is equal to 4 put that and I can say negative and then I get x is equal to 4 look at this I got x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 4 now how do you go back to that so what you do is take this one back you have got x minus 4 here you put it in brackets take this one back you also have x minus 4 now, if you bring it together, you can see that is x minus 4 and it's x minus 4. Do you see that? So it's the same thing. Even if I was factorizing here, I could have used the quadratic equation but uh, to solve. So here, if you knew how to factorize, you can come up with x minus 4 and x minus 4. For those who know, you can do it. But even if you use a quadratic formula, it will still get you that. But look at this. This is delta is equal to x minus 4. What? squared but back now to the perfect square example where i said in this case nine is a perfect square because it can be written as three squared so what you are concluding is that whenever you have done this you can conclude that this is a what a perfect square now if it is a perfect square you can therefore conclude say therefore it is number one a perfect square is real and a perfect square is rational. That's all that you conclude on that. That is how you solve it. I hope I'll bring more of those nature of roots because there are different area, ways of, of proving them in terms of real, non-real, and rational, and um, irrational. All right, guys. So now that is 30 marks. So I don't know if you are looking at 30 marks how many marks out of 30 by now have, would you have scored? Remember, use this as your revision. Now, let us finalize question number two. And in question number two, it's not going to be long because it's just 12 marks and it's a few questions. You're supposed to simplify without, guys. If they say without a calculator, guess what? Use the calculator. That's the first thing you have to do. But now, how do I use a calculator? The first one is exponents. You see, I'm given this. Um, kind of long exponents, but they say I must not use a calculator. Five marks. The answer means I need a little bit of working, but what I sometimes do, I just want to test how does this thing simplify to. For example, choose any value of a that you're thinking of. Any value, let's say five. For interest sake, let's choose five. We will also use um, uh, minus, minus seven. Let's choose any value. Now I'm going to take my calculator and simplify this. Punch as is, remember we start with a is equal to 5. Let me hide this for now. So you've got 5 to the power a is 5 minus 2. 5 to the power 5 minus 2 times, which is the dot, 2 to the power a plus 2 is 5 plus 2. See that? All over. Find a way to go down there, which is 10 to the power 5. 
minus 10 to the power 5 minus 1 are you with me times 2 I hope this is gonna work in there look when I'm simplifying this I'm getting a 1 over 5 now let's go backwards you saw I got a 5 now I said instead of 5 put minus 7 there but you now need to uh, well without even a bracket let's put a negative 7 Usually, I prefer with a, 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 a negative 7 whenever you're dealing with uh, negatives to put a bracket. Negative 7. Where there was a 5, I'm now uh, instead putting a negative 7. If you say equal to, see, equal to again, it gives me 1 over 5. So the question is, um, if I'm getting 1 over 5 on any number, which means this thing, when I'm simplifying, it will become 1 over 5. You see, I already have an answer. I just have to work towards my answer. That is all. Same thing with here. If they say without using calculator, they know if you use a calculator, you can find the answer. Let's try here. Let's say m was equal to, let's not use big numbers. Let's say 3. So you do the same thing here. I I, I, I use a calculator to, to substitute where there is an m, I put what? Where there is an m, I put 3. So let's do that. So if I say square root of 27 bracket, I remember m, we say it is 3 to the power 6. Are you with me, guys? It was supposed to be a fraction first. So it's square root of 27. And then bracket m is 3 to the power 6. Okay. Minus square root of 48 bracket m is 3 to the power 6 all right go forward and over square root of 12 to the power 3 bracket which is m there to the power 6 all right equal to if i look at that okay it's not giving me a simplified version it says 1 comma 4 9 Okay, let's say it's 1,49 is the answer that I got. So let's try to work in a way, if you look at the final answer, we might be getting actually the final answer is 1,49 for any value of x. Now, let's simplify the first one. How do I get the first one? Let's clear this. Uh, it's quite long. I must be careful. 5 to the power a minus 2. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, I don't know what happened to that uh, my space there, but it was one over five and one comma four eight something like that is one comma four eight. I think this one was one over five. All right, so I think it uh, it got erased. Now look at this. If I'm to solve this now, it says um, five to the power a minus two. So I've got here five to the power a minus two. And then dot 2 to the power a plus 1. It's a plus 2, actually. All over. Uh, let me use this division one. It's much better. And then I've got 10 minus 10. So this one is 10 to the power a minus 10 to the power a minus 1. I think I got that properly there. And then 10 minus 10 power dot 2. Okay, let's get it going. First things first, focus on the smaller numbers. You've got a 5, you've got a 2, but you've got a 10. But remember, 10 is same as 5 times 2. You see? So they give you something that is intentional. Look, you've got also a 2 there and a 10. So you can express everything in terms of 5 and 2. So what are you going to do? And again, uh, remember guys, there is, okay, let's do that for now. So it will be 5 to the power a minus 2. Let me not confuse you. 2 to the power of a plus 2 over, the first one here is 5 times 2 to the power a minus 5 times 2 to the power a minus 1 dot 2. Are we together now when we have done that 
you remember the law I, I once stated to say if you are given a to the power of x plus y, you can split it to become a to the power of x dot a to the power of y. If it's a plus, you multiply. So the same thing here, you see, we are going to use that law here and there and on the bottom. So what we have, we have got 5 to the power of a times or dot uh, 5 to the power negative 2 times or dot 2 to the power of a times 2 to the power of 2. That's what happens on the top over. Now at the bottom, I'm not going to repeat a lot of steps here just because it's long and unnecessary. Look at this. If I'm going to be working at the bottom here and I've got this thing 5 times 2, it's the same as saying a times b. If there is a power m, it means it's a to the power of m times b to the power of m. So here, if there is a power a like that, it would be 5 to the power of a times um, 2 to the power of a. That's the first part. Secondly, if I'm given this one, 5 times 2 to the power a minus 1. First thing, you split it as 5 times 2 a dot or times 5 times 2 and then you've got power negative 1. You see that? So when you simplify it, it will be 5 to the power of a times 2 to the power of a times 5 to the power negative 1 times 2 to the power negative 1. You see how it's split? So I'm just going to write this final thing here. Let me just pull it like this. I'm going to write this final thing because I don't want to waste time. So it's 5 to the power of a times 2 to the power of a minus 5 to the power of a, which is this now, times 2 to the power of a times 5 to the power negative 1 times 2 to the power negative 1. Are you seeing what I'm doing? Then from there, I can cancel out the a's and everything. So, I mean, what is common? 5 to the power. Okay, I cannot cancel. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Because of that negative, I cannot cancel. The only thing I need to do first is to factorize because of the negative. Even if it was a positive, I need to factorize. I can only cancel if everything was a multiplication sign. So, let me factorize. On top, things are fine. You can just cancel because everything is multiplying like that. See, that's how they try to trick you. But at the bottom, look at this. What is common? Look, 5 to the power a, 2 to the power of a. 5 to the power a, 2 to the power of a. So I'm going to factorize that to 5 to the power of a, 2 to the power of a. So when I'm factorizing, what it simple means, it's as if I'm saying this cancels that, you get a 1. You see that? So I'm going to get 1 minus, again, this cancelling that, I get 5 to the power minus 1 dot, I mean, 5, dot, 5 to the power negative 1 times 2 to the power negative 1. That's what I'm getting when I'm cancelling that, which is 5 to the power negative 1 times 2 to the power negative 1. So that is what the factorizing effect it has on that. I think, okay. So at this stage now, I can now cancel. Look at this. This can cancel that and that can cancel that. After factorizing, don't forget, only after factorization. That's where they wanted to trick you there. Then what are you left with on top? You have got 5 to the power negative 2 times 2 to the power of 2. At the bottom, you have got 1 minus 5 to the power negative 1 times 2 to the power negative 1. I just wrote it to separate everything from that. Now, if I simplify this, now remember 5 to the power negative 2 is same as 1 over 5 squared times 2 squared over 1 minus 5 to the power negative 1 is 1 over 5 times 2 to the power negative 1 is 1 over 2. That's what we are simplifying now in this case. Be, don't be tempted to remember no calculator. Now, which is 1 over 25 times 4, which is 2 squared is more like 4 over 1 over 1 minus 1 times 1 is 1 over 5 times 2. It's 10. That's what you are simplifying there. If you have this, it's 4 over 25 
because it's same as if it's 1 times 4 over 25 times 1. Then you say divide it by. Now, 1 minus 1 over 10. Remember, 1, this is same as like 10 over 10 is equal to 1. So 10 over 10 minus 1 over 10 is same as divided by 9 over 10. So if you, you can actually use a calculator without them actually checking out because it's not every time that you can, in a way, say that I use the calculator, you know. So if you can say 1 minus 9 over 10 quickly with the calculator, it can give you that, which is equal to 4 over 25. Now divide it, you can say times 10 over 9. Are you seeing that? Then we can simplify this to become, um, in this case, what are we having? We have got 10 there, 10 into that, it's um, 5 into 10 is 2. 5 in 25 is 5. Am I right? Now, this becomes 4 over 5 times 2 over 9. It becomes 8 over 45. But this is not what I envisioned because remember, I was getting 1 over 5. Now, I'm actually seeing what happened to this times 2. Let me go back to this. Okay, did I not lose out anything here? Let's check again if ever there's something that I lost while I was doing the, um, whatever I was doing. Let's take it back a little bit to the top. This is correct there. If I'm looking at that and that, this is correct, this is correct, that is correct. So far so good. And then at the bottom, it was fine. Five is negative. Um, 5 to the power a, 2 to the power a, it was that one, dot 5 to the power negative 1. So in a way, I see where the error was. This is the error part. That's why I'm saying this 2. See, this 2 was left out. I was supposed to come here and say times 2. I'll be adding it across. Come here while we were factorizing. Put a bracket here and say times 2. You see that? That is where things, I think, got lost. Again, which is equal to on top is fine. And then again, say times 2. And then again here, say times 2. So I think if I'm to correct things, I can correct things going down from here. So that was the two. I think that got everything uh, confused there because in a way I was expecting a one, com a one, one over five. So let's correct that to say if it was like this, will it change? So this case now, this two and that two are supposed to cancel. So in a way you have got in this case equal to one over 25 times four. Remember I said the same as four over one over one minus 1 over 5. See that? Remember, you've cancelled that. Now, 1 over one minus 1 over 5 is 4 over 5 because it's 5 over 5 minus 1 over 5. So we have got 4 over 25 divided by 4 over 5. Are you seeing that? Which is equal to 4 over 25. That's equal to 4 over 25. Change the division to multiplication. It's 5 over 4. That's where everything was now changing. 4 cancels, 5 cancels, 5 into 25 is 5. The answer is 1 over 5. Remember what I was trying to bring in there to say. It does simplify to that is 1 over 5. I'm just trying to uh, move a bit faster because of time. I've spent quite a lot of this. Remember, these are 24-minute lessons. So do it. Give yourself some break. Do it and give yourself some break. Now, let us look at this one. 2.1.2. If I come in erase so that I can get some good space again. <clears throat> so that I can get some good space again. Now look at this. I'm given square root of 27m. So I hear what I have. It's square root of 27m to the power of 6. And then it's what? Minus square root of 48 
m to the power of 6 over sometimes this line it's better to use that one and then 12 m to the power of 6 so i square root of 12 m to the power of 6 look at this they say don't use a calculator don't forget the instruction without without is the keyword if you use a calculator there you're going to be in trouble so don't show that you use a calculator but you need to be clever here what you do is take a calculator and say to yourself what is square root of 27 you'll see that the calculator will give you some answers uh if i can just take a calculator here and say square root of 27 look what the calculator gives me it gives me 3 root 3 which means if i square 3 it will be 9 squared 3 squared is is 9 so if i say 3 squared square root okay 3 squared let me do this if i say square root of 3 squared times 3 you see it's giving me 3 root 3 so that's what i'm going to have there what about 48 48 if i say 48 equal to see it's giving me 4 so i'll say square root of 4 squared times 3 you see it's giving me the same thing what about 12 if i say square root of 12 it gave me that answer then i'll say 2 squared times 3 square root of 2 squared times 3 is giving that so you saw what i did right so you can use your calculator intelligently there so which is equal to square root of uh 27 it was 3 squared times 3 minus this one it was square root of 4 squared times 3 because let me see 4 squared it's 16 times 3 for 8 yes this is correct over this one was square root of 2 squared times 3 now you can see what is happening m6 m6 and m6 see that then equal to now square root of 3 squared then you have to 3 root 3 now m6 is same as like that let me show you this if i say square root of m6 this is same as m6 times a half which is same as m6 divided by 2 which is same as m3 are you seeing that so you can literally state that this is same as um m3 outside the square root minus that one is 4 square root of 3 m3 outside the square root over 2 square root of 3 m3 you see that now because again i keep on saying because of that negative you need to factorize what is common what is common square root of 3 and then what is common m3 so we need to factorize that so we see that square root of 3 m3 is what is common so we need to take it out so when you take it out it's more remember like you're cancelling like that so you're left with three on the first one so you have got three minus again you cancel that you cancel that you're left with four do you see that so um minus four over two square root of three m3 see where it's going now then you are able to cancel out that square root of 3, that m3. So what you simply have is equal to 3 minus 4 is minus 1 over 2. I was expecting also the calculator to give me, remember I did work on this to say when you're putting m, m, m. It was giving me 1,48 something like that, but which means I don't know if I substituted right, but this is the simplified version of that answer is 1, negative 1 over 2. All right, and the last one, it says without, again, they are very sensitive here, without using a calculator, show that this one is, is good because you are literally showing that. So now how do we show that? Let's take it as is 2 over 1 plus root 2. Uh, let's erase there. So what we have, we have 2 over 1 plus root 2 and then minus 8 over root 8 these are sets you are saying you are supposed to show that this is equal to negative 2 
Are you seeing that, guys? Different ways, but the key issue here is rationalize. Rationalize. How do you rationalize the first one? So you do this. It's 2 over 1 plus square root of 2. Remember how to rationalize the top and the bottom. So you multiply in a way by the... Um, what, what do I call it? It's more like a difference of two squares thing, whereby it will be 1 minus square root of 2 over 1 minus square root of 2. So the denominator is the common thing I'm looking at, but I interchange that sign. Instead of positive, it's a negative, so that it becomes a difference of two squares. But very important is to also protect that with a bracket. Remember, when I multiply this, let me show you, 1 plus square root of 2 multiplied by 1 minus square root of 2. Look what's happening. 1 times 1 and then 1 times it's it's minus okay it's plus 1 times negative root 2 then you do that one which is plus uh, root 2 times 1 and then the other one is plus root 2 times root 2. Did you see that? So 1 times 1 is 1. Then it's minus 1 times minus root 2 is negative root 2. Root 2 times 1 is plus root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is plus 2. So look at this. This always cancels. So the key thing here is when you're multiplying a difference of two squares, it's as good as if you're multiplying the first one and the last one. So you say 1 times 1 and then you're going to say plus root 2, um, negative 2, like that. So you've got 1 times 1 is 1, minus, um, it was supposed to be a negative, then not a plus. And then root 2, and then which is 1 minus 2, which is equal to negative 1. You see that? So whenever we're multiplying, we're going to multiply the first one, and the last one that's what it simplifies the rest of the thing you're multiplying is just a waste of time and then if we move on to the next one remember it's minus continues to be uh, minus here now 8 over square root of 8 again i need to rationalize this when i'm rationalizing you multiply by the square root of 8 at the top of a square root of 8 at the bottom guys i can cancel out this i can cancel out this it's gone so in a way i didn't change anything what i'm doing on top i'm doing at the bottom so when i do that i can now have at the top two square root of uh sorry about that it's one minus square root of two over i told you it's one times one and then it's plus root two times negative root 2 at the top minus 8 root 8 over square root of 8 times square root of 8. That's what I'm having. You can further open that bracket there, which is 2 minus 2 root 2 over 1 times 1 is 1 root 2 times negative root 2 is negative 2 minus 8 a uh, root 8 over square root of 8 times square root of 8 is simple 8 see that continuing now when you continue now 2 minus uh 2 root 2 here i let me leave it like that for now 2 root 2 over 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 8 cancels the 8 is minus root 8 i think that this continues equal to now, the negative into negative, negative 1 into 2 is negative 2. Negative 1 to negative 2 root 2 is plus 2 root 2, you see, minus 8. Now, if you carefully check what is your negative 8 uh, on the calculator, you will see something uh, good, interesting. Look at this. If I say square root of 8, See, that is 2 root 2. So here, you continue to say, this is the same as square root of 4 times 2. So that you show that you never use the calculator. So this is equal to negative 2 plus 2 root 2 minus 4 is 2 root 2, which is equal to, you can see, 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2 is gone. The answer is negative 2. And then they say, show that. Uh, let me just take it here. What was the question saying? Show that this is called to negative 2. Then you can say 
which is equal to our right hand side you have shown so guys it was a long session one that i was trying to work across all these um 12 plus 30 marks which is uh, uh 42 marks it's a very good section i mean think of it let's take a calculator and say if you get everything correct 42 over 150 just doing question one and two on algebra how many percent is that so if you say 42 over 150 equal to and then times 100 percent equal to press st it's 28 percent now this is 28 percent remember the pass mark the pass mark is 30 percent so which means you just need a two percent to just get your 30 percent so are you telling me that in question number three let's go now to this question in question number three out of 10 you can fail to get just a few marks there and then question number four out of 15 you can fail to get marks question number five out of 17 you can fail to get marks out of 19 question number six question number seven out of nine question number eight out of 16 question number nine which is out of 18 and question number 10 i mean you just need it's easy to pass but remember my focus is not for passing it's taking the underdogs into the uh, levels of level seven and level six so guys level seven and level six you need to practice thoroughly hard not to make errors but you need to be very sensitive with testing your answers proving your answers ways possible so that you can be able to uh, ensure that minimal errors are made it's better to say i don't know this approach but to make errors is actually frustrating i hope guys this was of benefit to you i know it was long do it in 24 minutes pockets so that you can watch it refresh watch it refresh continue watching until the end of this lesson we have come to the end of our lesson remember to subscribe remember to share the channel remember also to use these in your revision groups especially for those guys who like to revise as a group you want to cross night and everything this can come handy with you thank you guys